Okay. So, uh, we are now here to study about Gauss law of gravitation. Right? Gauss law of gravitation. We have a very analogous law in gravitation. We have a we, we have we study Gauss law of electrostatics so we have a very analogous law in case of gravitation also right for that there is a clear analogy between electrostatics and gravitation the first analogy lie in the nature of the forces electrostatic force gravitational force both are following inverse square law. Both are exchanged in character. In case of electrostatic force, you have the virtual photons as the mediating particle. The force is mediated by virtual photons. Here it is mediated by gravitons, which yet not has been found, but they have there is strong basis. Both are massless, both are long range forces. Since the mediating particle are massless, the force is long range, of course. Depends on the mediating particle, the mass of rest mass of mediating particle. So the force is mediated by massless particles, so the range is infinity, right? So there is lots of similarity between electrostatic force and gravitational force. Both are central forces. Both are central forces, right? So uh, let me first define what we call gravitational field. So we define gravitational field due to a point mass. Every mass around itself creates a kind of field such that if you bring any mass m dash, this m dash will experience a force, right? This m dash is going to experience a force. So if you bring any mass in the vicinity of m, that particular body is going to experience a force. So we say every body develops a kind of gravitational field around itself, right? So gravitational field is defined as the gravitational field, the gravitational field due to a, I'll define for point mass, due to a point mass at any point P, suppose you have a point mass here and I want to define gravitational field at distance R, suppose at point P. So that is equal to the force experienced by a unit uh, a unit mass or experienced by a body of unit mass placed at point P. Force experienced by, if you place a body of mass 1 kg, and the force experienced by this 1 kg mass at the place at point P, is going to be the gravitational field. It's going to be the gravitational field. So what is the force acting on the unit mass over here? That's going to, actually it's denoted by by G. So G is going to be the force which is experienced by 1 kg of mass placed over here. That's equal to Gm into 1 upon r square er and I have to put minus sign because the force will be always radially inward. Your er is in outward direction and this gravitational force acting on any body is towards the center, towards this mass. So your g gravitational field produced by any body, a point mass of mass m at any point p which is at the distance r from the point mass is given by this. You see a clear analogy. In case of electric field, it was Q upon 4 pi epsilon naught R square ER. So the analogy lies, I can say there is an analogy is analogous to G and uh, your Q is analogous to mass M 
and uh, epsilon naught is analogous to I can say 1 upon 4 pi g right so seeing this analogy I can write Gauss law of gravitation I can write based on this analogy I can write Gauss law of gravitation that is the flux of gravitational field across a closed Gaussian surface is equal to the net mass enclosed by Gaussian surface multiplied by 4 pi g where g is gravitational constant g is gravitational constant so I can write g dot nds as 4 pi g m where n is and outward drawn unit normal vector to s n is an outward drawn unit normal vector to s this, this is the Gauss law of gravitation and m is the mass enclosed by the Gaussian surface g this is flux of gravitational field across the Gaussian surface I'll take one question which I'll solve using Gauss law of gravitation let me take that question say the question is uh, find the gravitational field as a function of R for a spherical body of mass m and a radius r. This spherical body is solid sphere. I tell you, the, I give you this information. The solid sphere and mass m is uniformly distributed. I have all these assumptions, right? You have the solid sphere. Right, and we have to find out gravitational field as a function of r. We have to find out gravitational field as a function of r. This is your radius r. This is radius r. Right. So we have to find gravitational field as a function of r. M is the total mass. The volume density of mass. So rho is m upon 4 pi r cube, right? So now we have to find gravitational field as a function of r. So we have to find gravitational field inside, we have to find gravitational field outside. So let's first take the case of the gravitational field inside. So first thing we have to do is we have to choose Gaussian surface. So we have to choose right kind of Gaussian surface because see your Gauss law does not directly correlate uh, g to the mass enclosed. It correlates the surface integral of g to mass enclosed. So you will be able to get g only when you are able to solve this integral. Right. And you have to solve this integral without exactly knowing the expression of g without exactly knowing the mathematical expression of G. So choosing a right kind of Gaussian surface is very, very important. Choosing a right kind of Gaussian surface will be extremely important. Otherwise, you won't be able to solve this integral and then you can't, you can't get G in that case. So choosing a Gaussian surface is very, very important. This Gaussian surface should be 
symmetric to mass distribution and uh, it should pass through the point where G is to be found. If you take these Gauss, these consider if you take such a Gaussian surface, it will help you in finding this surface integral. This is not something which is required by the Gauss law, as I have discussed in Gauss law of electrostatics, right? So this is not required by the Gauss law. It is just for our convenience in evaluating the surface integral. So suppose I want to find the gravitational field over here. So I'll take a Gaussian surface which is symmetric to the mass distribution and passing through this point P. So what can be the Gaussian surface should I take? I should take the Gaussian surface as say this. I can take this Gaussian surface. I can take a Gaussian surface of radius small r. P is a, P is a point at distance smaller from the center, so I can take this as the Gaussian surface. So in that case, the flux of G across the Gaussian surface, this is your Gaussian surface. See, G is always radially inward, it's always attractive, and N is your outward draw normal. So on the whole Gaussian surface, your G dot N is going to be minus G. Because N is an outward draw normal which will lie in radially outward direction and G is radially inward. So radially inward and radially outward. Dot product is going to be minus G, cos 180 degree, minus 1. So this is G dS. And G is a function of R. So it's a central force field, right? It is a central force field. So G is a function of R. G is going to have the same magnitude at every point on the Gaussian surface. So I can take G outside since our domain is Gaussian surface on the whole Gaussian surface your G is having constant value. So it is Z into 4 pi R square. And what is mass enclosed? Mass enclosed is mass enclosed by the Gaussian surface. This is flux across the Gaussian surface we have to find mass enclosed by the Gaussian surface. That is going to be your rho is constant. So it will come out. So rho into volume of the Gaussian surface. Okay. So your G dot NDS, this is the Gauss loss. So we will use this G into 4 pi R square. Oh into 4 pi r square and 4 pi g rho 4 pi 4 pi will go away and your g is 4 pi g rho r upon 3 minus n inverse attraction I can write in vector form 4 pi G rho R E R. This is for R less than R, right? Now, so this is your gravitational field inside. This is the gravitational field inside. Let's take case two for R greater than R. For R greater than R. If I put the value of rho, what should I get? 4 pi g by 3 and m upon 4 by 3 pi r cube that's a rho r e r so that will give you minus gm hmm. oh minus gm by r cube this is going to be a G in terms of capital mass M. Okay. Now let's find for a point lying outside. What is the field for a point lying outside? Then we have to take a Gaussian surface passing to the point where G is to be found. So your now G you need G at this point. So in that case, we have to take a Gaussian surface passing to this point. 
so okay sorry uh, i should choose this tool so your Gaussian surface should pass through this point okay this will be the Gaussian surface passing to this point so here also your g is inward n is outward so your flux of g flux of g is going to be um, I can write minus g oh. Can write minus g ds. I can take g outside, so g depends only on r. r is constant on the Gaussian surface, so it is 4 pi r square. Now, your r this is also r, but r is now greater than capital R. Okay, and what is the mass enclosed? Mass enclosed is capital M. So, the Gauss law gives you flux g dot n ds equals to 4 pi g m so minus g 4 pi r square and 4 pi g capital m so g is minus g m by r square so your g comes to be minus g m by r square epsilon r right okay so this is your g this is your G. So we have found G inside and we have found G outside. Okay. Can you plot the graph? I can plot the graph for you. The graph will be something like this. So your uh, initially G is linear function of R. So I can say this is going to be a graph. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is going to be a graph till R and thereafter it will go like this right it will go like this oh I should draw a dotted line over here that will make it very clear so <coughs> this is your capital R this is your G this is g for r less than r this is g for r greater than r okay this is your minus gmr upon r cube and this is minus gm by r square in 10 plus 2 books you get the graph above this axis but then that is right till 10 plus 2 level at 10 plus 2 book uh, you find this kind of graph right then it looks good till 10 plus 2 but not at graduation level at graduation level you have to draw it like this at 10 plus 2 we can neglect the significance of sign but for a graduate student it is expected that you must know what does the sign signify so don't put this this will be wrong right I should this won't be the graph this will be the graph this is the right graph okay G is this thank you very much